the Game of Life podcast coming at you, where we bring to you the behind the scenes lives of NBA players, business savvy entrepreneurs, and top level performers in all fields of personal development. The podcast that helps you become the best version of you. The Game of Life, David Nurse. Here we go. And that's always amazing to me uh, when I have these conversations with, with high level performers. I go, you could be performing so much better. And they're like, well, I'm already performing well. I'm like, well, that's your normal now. But what if your normal yeah. could be even better? Great. Man, and that's so great point. It's, it's always about what you feel like is your normal, right? So, <clears throat> yep. And this happens in, in elite athletes. This happens in, in weekend warriors. It happens in people that don't get off the couch and eat bonbons, right? It's like whatever yeah. their normal is is what, what it is. And you don't realize how much you can feel until you do. Game of Lifers, we are coming to you live from the future. Whatever day it is there right now that you are listening to this podcast, I am one day ahead of you. Is it because I biohacked my way to becoming an official Jetson? No, it's because I'm in Japan. So literally, I did nothing but fly to another time zone and eat really, really, really good food, of course. Little known fun fact about Japan, you can actually get gourmet meals from 7-Eleven. Kid you not, come to Japan just for the 7-Elevens alone. All right, enough about the Japanese cuisine. Today, you are in for a biohacking legendary podcast with one of the smartest optimization minds that I have ever personally been around. Game of Lifers, welcome to the podcast, Dr. Scott Shear. Dr. Shear is the director of Integrative Hyperbaric Medicine and Health Optimization at Hyperbaric Medical Solutions. Whoa, yeah. Just a mouthful right there, but literally every single word right there biohacked my brain to the max. What does that all mean, you might ask? Well, that means Dr. Shear is about to blow your mind on why health and optimizing your life is never just completely cookie cutter. It is never the same for one person as it is for another. Finding the optimal health is all about finding what works best for you, your blueprint. And in this episode, Dr. Shear will give you a direct blueprint of how you can do that and how you can literally change your mindset on your health right now, right here in this podcast alone. We dive deep into why hyperbaric therapy is an absolute must, the extreme importance of gut health and how it's related to your brain health and how to eat the exact right foods, not for everybody, but for you personally, how to merge feel with tracking to be fully in control of your body and how to become the ultimate, ultimate, wait for it, how to become the ultimate super pooper. Yeah, I said it. Super pooper. You'll find out more about that in this episode. All of this and so much more here on the Game of Life podcast. So get ready, Game of Lifers. Let's buckle up because here we go. So I went I went to medical school in the hopes of bringing these beautiful worlds together. I thought that there was probably a lot that conventional medicine could offer, although I didn't have much experience with it at the time. And then I knew about alternative medicine, the way my father was practicing as a chiropractor. And I was like, I have this potentially beautiful potential of bringing these worlds together. I mean, during medical school, I lost sight of that sometimes (laughs) because of the craziness that ensued. But it was really actually amazing in a lot of ways. I learned a lot, met some really amazing people, and I got to experience a lot of different types of technology and practices. The one that I most resonated with was related to an uh, experience of mine when I was a third-year medical student in uh, called shock trauma in Baltimore, which is a trauma center in Baltimore where all shock and trauma goes. And inside that facility in the basement was this gigantic submarine-looking thing called a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. And this hyperbaric chamber was treating patients with carbon monoxide poisoning and flesh-eating bacteria, some terrible stuff. And these people were going in really sick Sometimes, sometimes even on ventilators and coming out, like walking out of the chamber. And I was like, what the hell did they just do? And <laughs> I got really excited. So I, uh, when I, I learned when it was from the technicians there that it was just a combination of oxygen and pressure, I got really excited even more knowing it was just two simple things being put together and stimulating healing from the inside out, really. And 
I started really getting involved in just diving into the research, understanding what was happening in this country and other countries. It became the, the focal point of my practice up until recently, where I mostly just focused my practice on an integrative approach uh, to hyperbaric medicine and this performance and wound healing technology. Man, yeah, that is definitely game changing right there. So hyperbaric oxygen therapy. All right, I'm not, I'm not super familiar with it. I mean, obviously, I know the hyperbaric chambers and everything, but how how is this? How did that actually? Uh, I know you saw it in firsthand, but how is that shifting how uh, medicine should be done in the intercellular uh, perspective? Well, I, the nice thing about uh, the chamber is it's super simple. You just have two things. You have uh, oxygen, so we all need it, right? Yep, yep, <laughs> for sure. So oxygen in the air that we breathe is only about 21% oxygen in it. The rest is made of other gases. What we do in the chamber is we increase that to 100%. Gotcha. And then we combine it with pressure. So if you've ever been diving or even in a pool yeah. and or in any kind of body of water, a lake or river, uh, you once you're underneath the, all the water, you feel weightless in it, but that water is exerting a pressure on you. Because water is heavy. Water, if you pick up a bucket of water, for example, is, is heavy. For so sure. that heaviness, that pressure, you can simulate in a chamber, and that actually drives the oxygen into circulation. You have something called oxygen carrying capacity, the ability for your body to utilize the oxygen that you're breathing in. What we can do in, in a chamber is we can supersaturate the body with more oxygen to giving you more oxygen carrying capacity. And what that can do in the short term is it can help very much get oxygen where it needs to go. If there's inflammation, if there's swelling, if there is injury, oxygen is needed even in, in higher quantities to help that potential tissue heal uh, and heal faster. So what I've realized over the time of, of being involved in hyperbaric medicine is that oxygen really, really in, in its essence is making energy at the cellular level. Okay. That's so huge. If, you're, if you're making energy at the cellular level, you're also able to resuscitate cells that may be injured if they've been injured. You also may be able to decrease inflammation and help the whole wound healing process just go faster and be accelerated. So you have all these mechanisms in our cells that allow it to be optimized regularly. And evolutionarily, we have these things called mitochondria, which are these Bingo. parts of our cells that make energy. And it's their energy production capabilities that we co-opted billions of years ago uh, or millions of years ago into, into our cells, into, into what are now animal cells to help produce oxygen more effectively. Now, what hyperbaric therapy can do is just optimize the ability to make energy at that level. It also has an effect on the DNA itself in helping to express some proteins and genes that are responsible for growth and and decreasing inflammation, so making new blood vessels, making stem cells get released from the body to help with injury. It kills bacteria and other bugs. It revitalizes tissue. And the other, it, it also helps suppress various genes that are responsible for inflammation. So if you have a lot of inflammation, you can't heal. If you have a lot of inflammation, you feel like crap. Um, if you have a lot of inflammation, your muscles hurt, right? So hyperbaric therapy can help with that inflammatory cascade and, and decreasing it and, and mitigating it. So it's all done in the chamber where you breathe in the inspired oxygen of 100% and you're pressurized. And wow. it's simulating the pressure that you'd be underwater, but you're just in a chamber. Right. There's no water involved. Wow. So why would not every professional sports team out there have one of these? Because you're decreasing inflammation, which at the core is why people get injured, why people get sick. You're accelerating the mitochondria, which is our power cells, and you're optimizing both the physical and mental performance and everything. So literally, like, why would every professional sports team not have one? Are they just behind the curve? It depends on who you ask, of course, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's, there's three different types of chambers. That's the gotcha. first thing to say, that okay. there's the more the portable chambers that can be easily transported from one place to another, obviously the definition of portable. And then there are two <laughs> different types of chambers that are less portable. Uh, one's called the monoplace chamber, uh, which is usually in, in medical facilities that are outside of hospitals. And then there is multi-place chambers is where multiple people can all get treated at the same time in the same submarine looking thing, which is what I first got experience with when I was in, in Baltimore. Now, the soft chambers, they don't go to as much pressure 
Now, they don't get as much oxygen, but they likely have some utility in neurocognitive performance along with muscle recovery. Um, and so, but that's very new data, David. So mm-hmm. this is not something that most people know about. Right. And so they're portable, they're less expensive. Uh, and I do have a very strong feeling that over the next five years, I mean, you're already seeing this in some athletics. You hear yeah. about NFL players sleeping in them. You hear about some NBA players using them. But the challenge, I think, is that they're not being used in the right context. You know what I mean? So For sure. in the sense that it's great to have a chamber. It's great to harness the healing power of the cells, the mitochondria to make energy. But the challenge, and this is what you see a lot of, I think, too, is that you have to make sure that these athletes have a good foundation because the foundation is what is key. And when I talk about foundation, I talk about how is their foundational health? Are there are their cells working well? Do they have the right vitamins, the right minimal, minerals, the right uh, nutrients? Are they, do they have antioxidant le- that a- antioxidant levels that are at normal levels? Are they toxic? What does their gut look like? Um, because if you don't look at that stuff first, and then you try to harness the power of something like hyperbaric therapy, you're going to be at a disadvantage because you're not going to be able to do it at maximal capacity. Uh, for, for optimal uh, results. So my focus over the last several years now has been working on that foundation with clients and working on that foundation, that intracellular foundation. That, uh, the gut is such a huge component yes. of this too, what yep. we're eating. Yep. Uh, wh- because we talk about inflammation, the, what the, the bacteria in our gut regulate inflammation. They regulate how our immune system is functioning. They regulate how our brain functions. So if you are eating the wrong foods, if you are not taking care of your gut, if you're not looking at what you actually need on the cellular level, you are going to be performing at your maximal capacity, even if you're already performing at very high capacity. And what, and that's always amazing to me uh, when I have these conversations with, with high-level performers. I go, you could be performing so much better. And they're like, well, I'm already performing well. I'm like, well, that's your normal now, but what if your normal yeah. could be even better? Great. Man, and that's so great point. It's, it's always about what you feel like is your normal, right? So, <clears throat> yep. And this happens in elite athletes. This happens in, in weekend warriors. It happens in people that don't get off the couch and eat bonbons, right? It's like whatever yeah. their normal is is what, what it is. And you don't realize how much you can feel until you do. So my goal is to always put this in perspective. Hyperbaric therapy is a fantastic healer, synergizer, accelerator, working at the cellular level. But it's really important that you work on that foundation first. Yes, it's a good point. So going to first and building the foundation, and this is where I find it really important too, because most people in professional sports or in any walks of life are going to look at something from the outside instead of from the inside. And you're looking at the intercellular optimization, which basically, uh, for layman's terms and people that are not as super sciencey smart like myself is like you're going to look at their, their whole blood panel. You're going to look at everything nutrition wise, and you're going to figure out what optimally is going to make them feel the best and perform the best. So it's it takes the guessing out of it, and you really know how to dial it in and figure out. Okay, I'm performing like this right now, but like even for myself, I'm an optimization nut, and I coach NBA players on how to optimize their sleep, their nutrition, everything. But still, for me, like I'm. I'm doing a lot of just testing and, and guessing myself and how I feel, right. and, I, and I felt great by it. But like, I'm getting super excited talking to you right now because I know that I can take my normal, I can take my normal great, great feeling and even increase it. All right, welcome back to the Game of Life podcast. We've got Jeremy Lin on. Jeremy, what's going on? The two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. He's like the eye of the hurricane because in the middle of the hurricane, it's really calm. And so Michael never tried to stop all the madness around him. What he learned was he just got calm in the middle of it. Stealing that pass at Staples, I was like, dude. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Give Kobe a little glance after that. What's up? Uh, You want to be that person that when they walk into a room, that people are happy to see you. Talk to me about working with Ronaldo. You helped coach Ronaldo to become a great sleeper. 
A human test tube. Thank you, man. I, I, <laughs> I think that's like one notch up from being a human guinea pig. <laughs> They'll take it. In a good uh, way. And I just pray, man. Like, I just pray and I just thank God for, for everything. The moment you realized, man, I'm in the NBA. Oh, man, that was from day one. That was the the... The day I got drafted, when I heard my name being called... Buckle up, the Game of Life podcast coming at you, where we bring to you the behind-the-scenes lives of NBA players, business-savvy entrepreneurs, and top-level performers in all fields of personal development. The podcast that helps you become the best version of you. Right, and and that's, I think, the, the big thing here. David, is the idea of personalization. Yes. So many of us will go online and go, oh, that supplement looked amazing. It didn't help my brain function better. Uh, oh, man, I'm supposed to take a vitamin. I'm, I'm, I got to find a vitamin to take. Or I'm taking yeah. these antioxidants. Or I'm taking these other pills. The challenge is if you don't know why you're taking what you're taking, it could be dangerous Big too. Time. Yep. And, and, and it may actually do you a disservice. If you're taking too many antioxidants, it actually can have the opposite effect. If you're taking too many vitamins or even too few vitamins, obviously, if you need them, then you are going to be at a disadvantage. The challenge is even if you have the most beautiful diet in the world, the vitamin and mineral content, content of the food that we have now is about half what it was 50 years ago. So it's really difficult. You know, our bodies were programmed, depending on what you believe, you know, thousands, a hundred thousands of years ago to be performing on, you know, on prairies and on for long-term hikes and, and marathon kinds of sprints and then feast famine and yep. we're not used to this this world that we have now with these lights and the, the crappy sleep and everything else that i know you focus on yeah but you know, we can test all this stuff at least and say okay we're not back in ancestral times but what can we do to help optimize to those times at least from a cellular health perspective and so it's really important to quantify this stuff it's really important to set metrics as to what we're looking to do and understanding the science as to why, but always coming back to measuring and testing it because yes. if you're not, you're just, you're blind. And so, and I, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to say that it's not important how you feel. Of course, I grew up in a chiropractic household where everything was feel, right? Nothing was tested. So I know how much feel matters, but if you can combine, especially if you're looking to optimize at the very high levels, like you are, David, Yes, you really want to take those two things into account because as you probably know, our bodies and our minds can trick us all the time <laughs> <It's just laughs> yeah. to thinking. Um, and some of that's very cool, like the placebo effect, for yeah. example, right? Yeah. The idea that you take a placebo, you feel better, you're actually changing your own physiology just by how you feel, how you think it's going to make you feel. So that's cool and important, but you can test all that. And yep. testing, I really feel like, is the anchor of all this to continue to make sure that you have a solid foundation. Well, testing just gives everything. Uh, I mean, it just gives everything backing. Like, like you said, like I also am a, a mindset coach to players, and that's what my book is about. It's all about how do you change your mindset. And a lot of it's just the yeah. way you think, but also, like, I'll use the aura ring to track my sleep. And whenever I see like a ninety-two on sleep, and it says you're ready to attack the day, I'm like, okay, I'm jacked up, ready to go. So you're able to see the results of your body functioning at the highest level in all aspects, it's only going to increase your mindset for it too. So I think it's, I mean, having both of those in unison are very, very important. Health optimization medicine, which is the program that I use for my clients home for short H O M E yes, is simply a framework that can be, it can be to anybody as far as how and when they're ready to engage. Some people are not ready for entire changes in their sleep or in their right. movement or in their, uh, their ability access to, to sunlight or whatever, but they are ready to get blood, urine, and stool testing because that's more similar to what they've done in, in a laboratory in a medical setting before. Okay, let's, let's take an MBA player and – Let's say, let's walk them through the whole process of, let's say I hand you a player and how would you walk them through the process of home and how to optimize them personally? Okay, so the way I would start is how I start with almost any client, yes, which is a basic medical history. <laughs> yep, for sure. Uh, making sure that I understand not only 
their medical history, but what their goals are and you know, where they are with Love their it. career, with their, with their season, with the moment, and yep. making sure that we are looking to optimize in that framework. Uh, the next part of it would be to get them tested and tested for their cellular function, testing their gut function, and then testing their, their inflammatory response to, to certain food panels and making sure uh, to use that all information to create a package of recommendations that include supplements, uh, dietary changes, and some, potentially some lifestyle stuff as well, um, all together for them in a package that will take about three to six weeks to get back, depending on when they get the blood work. And once we do that, and then we can dial in their supplements, dial in their activity, and then I work with with coaches like yourself, David, and others to work on the various aspects of how we can sort of tweak and optimize depending on what the goals are. And I also work with other collaborators, and that's that's a big piece of what I do. I I love what I do, but I also feel like I'm pretty good at knowing what I don't know. So I have other specialists and other collaborators in other fields, but it be neurofeedback technology, uh, it, it's things like flow tanks, of course, yep. and other things that don't require doctors, um, but even other technologies um, or other practices that, that do require physicians or um, if you need cranial sacral work or if you need um, work done on movement uh, specifically, if they're not working with you or, or in some capacity, then I look to make sure that my network is leveraged and helped and also helping at the same time. And then on top of the health optimization medicine framework, the, the prescription for supplements, for, for dietary changes, for lifestyle changes, then I add on uh, something like hyperbaric therapy as an optimization strategy that stacked on top. Now you have all the cellular machinery that can be harnessed to make energy. Now you can use hyperbaric therapy potentially to recover from uh, your workouts, recover from games, recover from injury, and then also for cognitive optimization uh, as well, depending on the types of chambers. The mild chambers are good for all of that, and the, the, the hard chambers, the ones that are medical facilities, are really good for more of systemic issues or injuries like that are more bones and muscle injuries, like, bo- like if you tear an ACL or yeah. an Achilles or something like that, you want to go to a chamber that's going to give you deeper, more pressure. So I dial it in from there. So I've become like your health optimization medicine specialist yeah. with, uh, with collaborative potential on the hyperbarics, but also with other technologies, modalities, both cutting edge and even ancient. So, I mean, I talk about meditation all the time, for example. Yep. So uh, as being part of the holistic package. Yep. Man, it's, it's exactly like me. You have, for total optimization, I mean, you have your people at the highest level in each area that you're going to like specifically put them to. And that's that's why you'll be in my network forever because this is needed by everyone. And and what I see is is so important too for for NBA teams is like they do they travel a ton. 82 yeah. games, 41 of them are spent on the road. Like think about the impact that just traveling in a tube 30,000 feet above the earth has on you. And there's a lot hypoxic too. Oh, low I, oxygen yeah. list, right? Exactly. On the, on the plane you're you're if you're lucky at 6,000 feet on a Dreamliner. Otherwise, yeah. you're at 8,000 feet above sea level. And that's actually low oxygen concentrations there. So you are at more risk for all the things that you are at risk for that you know, being oh, yeah. on a plane, jet lag, sickness, fatigue, et cetera. Yeah. But there's, it's, I big. Mean, it's, it's huge. And there's just, there's games lost because of lack of uh, having the energy for the next game. You might have to fly. You might have to play three road games in four days. Think about if they could, if NBA teams could turn that and be whatever type of percent that hyperbaric uh, oxygen would give them as far as recovery, as far as re- regeneration, rejuvenation. And that could potentially like literally win games. Quick break in the podcast of biohacking your personal life. To talk to you about sleep. Sleep, yeah, it is everything. Nutrition, sleep, literally, that can change your life alone. Sleep, did you know the average person may spend more than 26 years of their life sleeping? 26 years? 
To me, yeah, that's that's life well spent, but we want that sleep to be able to recharge us and make us live every single day the best we can possibly live, meaning we need restorative sleep. I know I'm a nut for this. I use this every single night, and I wouldn't be promoting it if I didn't use it. It's the Aura Ring, ladies and gentlemen, the next level tracker, how you track your sleep, your activity, your HRV, helps you manage your weight, stay healthier, longer, perform at your best, may help you be more productive, and avoid, of course, the hang angry mistakes of life. Daily feedback to improve your health or it helps you better understand your body and reach your goals. You will be guided through an intelligent data-driven plan to help you improve across all important aspects of your well-being. Get better sleep today. Just for you Game of Lifers, we got a code for you. We hooked it up. D-Nurse. D-Nurse is the code. $50 off at checkout of your Aura Ring. I wear mine every single day, every single night to bed. It's like a fun game. I'll be able to track my progress and see myself improving daily. All right. Aura Ring. Aura.com. Check it out. D-Nurse at checkout. Get you one. Shout it out. Let me know how you're doing with it. Okay. Back to the second half of the podcast with Scott Shear. Time to biohack yeah i mean we've seen it on a small level uh with some teams Uh, mostly it's through individual patients uh, that come in and we can see them get back on the field 50 percent faster than their coaches would have ever thought and we see that a lot actually yeah and and we but from the the team level it's been a different conversation there's lots of different nuances and politics that i'm guessing a slight slightly more (laughs) Uh, yeah, slightly more experience with than I do. Yeah, yeah politics. <laughs> uh, you hit the nail on the head, man. Yep, that's yeah. the thing. So, so I get it, but I mean, from an individual perspective, we are seeing NFL players, NBA players, MLB players coming in, getting treatment, and getting back on the field faster and yeah. recovering faster. It's also potentially something that can be used on the off season to help with endurance. It's also something that can be used. Uh, for cardiac optimization and also getting new blood vessels in your brain so you can think better. I mean, these are kind of important for anything, but of course, Man. if you're in a high-level athletic, you need to be able to think fast, move fast. And But the resilience part is related to that foundation, David. It's rela- yes. related to the foundational cellular health, gut health, and that you're eating foods that are not making you sick or weak, but you're actually because I, I know a lot of the people that you work with, a lot of the, these are, you know, these are young guys. They're, they're at their prime and you're so much more resilient when you're 20 years old or 21, yeah. 25 years old, no matter what you do. But on top of that, if you decide that you really want to optimize, there's so much more potential for you if you're, if you're not doing any of the stuff already. If you're going to have McDonald's hamburgers or you're not <laughs> sleeping or you're going out and partying, like that's yeah. fine every once in a while. But if you take that down a notch and you look at some of this and you just start taking some supplements that are focused on what you need and and movement and focusing on sleep and and getting some sunlight in the middle of the day because there's a rash of vitamin D deficiency, especially in dark skinned people, um, you know, then your body starts being able to work at even a higher level than you were doing before. I mean, that's going to translate into contracts. That's going to translate into winning more games. That's going to translate into just having better relationships in your family, with people on your team, with your coaches. Exactly. I mean, it's it goes down the line. So it's uh, they call it like one of those sort of what do they call it? The uh, cornerstone habits. You know, the cornerstone ideas of of we do one thing and everything else just improves. And I and I really do feel like addressing your foundation. Obviously, it's a cornerstone. It's a foundational stone, if you want to call it that, that you lay that, everything else gets built on so much stronger on top of it. Man, that's such a good point, that that cornerstone. And, and to me, this is way more than just health optimization. This is literally life optimization. And you started to touch on it. It just gives you more joy. I mean, your passion is so much more. The culture is just increased there. Like instead of people coming to work with negative attitudes in an NBA team, everybody has more just, I mean, they you feel better. If you feel better, your body feels better, you're going to be happier. It's just It just goes hand in hand. And what right. I, what also I see is is really important for this is is not just for the players but for the coaches. I mean the coaches just grind and grind and grind. They get so worn down and mentally it's hard to perform at the highest level night after night after night with with yeah. lack of sleep and 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 this the hyperbaric oxygen therapy and home and everything just all together into one plus the optimization in in different areas and right like. Like ideally, I mean, that is exactly what I want to do. Set up a complete 
optimization team and basically lab for an NBA team. And it would just absolutely, I mean, it would, it would change the game, bringing you on, bringing a top, top level nutritionist on, bringing in any kind of optimization to improve somebody at any type of level is going to help performance to the max for an NBA team. It's going to help your mentality for the, to the max. It's going to help your overall joy, life and health. It's just like, to me, it's a no-brainer. To you, it's a no-brainer. It's like we're preaching to the choir here, but right. But yeah. man, it is just unbelievable how how much how important this is. It's 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 so life changing. Life changing. So, yep. Uh, and that's what it's, that's what it's all about, right? I mean, of course, uh, being an amazing athlete and doing the best that you can and being the best that you can be is is amazing and and noble and fantastic but overall it's it's a long-term strategy we're talking about here right yes. the idea is you know long term once you know once you're done with athletics uh, maybe hopefully 20 years for most of your clients right long time in in the nba yeah yeah uh, for sure that, yeah that that they still have a sustainable future outside of it even right so that like they've built that foundation they haven't built they haven't run themselves into the ground whether it be a coach or yeah. a player right. and now they have something that they can use for the rest of their life because yep. They started early. They preempted a lot of the stuff that can happen after 10, 15 years in the NBA or 10, 15 years of life for other people. And as a result of being preemptive about it, we are now pre, we're preclinical. Like this is, this is health. We're, we're, we're practicing health here. We're cultivating health. Yeah. We are establishing that foundation, as I keep saying. And then once you do that, you can prevent a lot of stuff from going wrong over the, few, over the long term. But you've addressed it early, the subtle signs, and that's what we can see at the cellular level, David, we can actually see subtle changes that don't actually present as problems. Yeah. Like you don't have any symptoms, but if you can address them early before these subtle toxicities, these subtle deficiencies uh, are actually manifest in illness or pain or inflammation, you have done so much for the rest of your life, but also for your performance in that day as well, yes. or in that yes. year, or in the, the next year when you're in your second or third year of your contract. It all goes together. The challenge that we have is that we have monkey minds. We have yep. not evolutionary programmed biology that says we need to worry about what's happening six months down the line. We have evolutionary program that says we need to know what's happening now, and what's going to keep me safe, and what's going to keep me fed. And that's what's most important because that our evolutionary programming. So yeah. um, what's really important with all of this is that you do it in a multidisciplinary way. So you have the little hacks that, that people can do that really make them feel good quickly, like sleeping better and um, doing Various things during the day, a little bit of meditation, a um, little bit of specific movement technologies or helping various things that can help you feel better faster, deal with pain, deal with cognition, et cetera, but built on top of that foundation, right? So that you're not sort of going into a bank that there's no money in. <laughs> so like, <laughs> and think about it, like if there's no money in the bank and you keep taking money or keep trying to take money, you're just – you're keeping – you're like this dead pool and it's, exactly. it's going to, it's going to catch up to you. Right. So For sure. if your bank is full with, with beautiful, um, in this case, not money, but like beautiful cellular energy, beautiful vitamins, minerals, and cofactors, you have so much to take from and so much to harness. And so that's really my goal is that I, that my goal is, is to create that bank, to create it, to be a full place that really can sustain somebody for the rest of their life, not just for the next couple of days or make them feel better for just a little while. This is a long-term strategy. Man, this is absolute gold. And you hit on so many good points. Like the point of being proactive instead of reactive. Professional sports is not like that. And even this year in the NBA, there's so many players that have been getting injured, so many really high-level players and players making – multi 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 millions into these investments that these teams put into these players but it's all on a reactive state instead of a proactive state always and, 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 to, and to me there's three there's three guys in professional sports that if i see them or hear of them doing something i know it's next level and it's got to be done lebron tom brady and ronaldo the soccer player they all mm -hmm. sleep in hyperbaric chambers hmm I wonder if we should all take note about that. There's something going in there. 
And that's, I mean, yeah, it's very true. I mean, those guys are on the cutting edge. Um, I would say one thing about sleeping in the chamber is or that using I don't it, recommend bad. it. Yeah. Okay. What's that? It. Yeah. Maybe yeah, just use it. Yeah. Maybe I got a little too excited. Maybe I want to just sleep in it, but okay. Keep, go, well, ahead. Okay. go ahead. With that. Okay. Take a nap. Um, nap. But I, there's, there's various things. And that's the other thing about um, hyperbaric therapy that I should mention. It's a medical technology, right? Yes. So it's important that if you're using it, and I have seen this on the high level athletic side is that the people are sleeping in it. They really don't know how to use it. They just were given a chamber by somebody and now they have it. They don't know what to do with it. So right. I think it's really important to have a plan. Like I said in the beginning, it's not just about getting in a chamber or sleep in it. You're going to feel better. What am I using it for? Why am I using it? What is my protocol going to look like and why? And what also am I doing to so make sure that I don't get hurt again or make sure that I continue to be optimized? So um, but the chambers are great uh, if they're used in the appropriate ways because you're oxygenating the body, helping decrease inflammation and get stem cells, which are these uh, the immature cells that get released from our body to help regenerate tissue. And you're creating new blood vessels, and, and that's really important too when you're trying to get a tissue-optimized vascular capacity so that, or, or blood vessel capacity so that it can maintain its endurance uh, during stress and various other ways. So, I mean, for, for me... It's just important uh, to always look at uh, the risks of these things too, and mm-hmm. so and making sure that people know know that uh, the risks for hyperbaric therapy, for example, are very very minimal. Uh, but if you're sleeping in all the time, that could be dangerous, you know. So yeah. you have to know kind of what you're doing. And so when I, whenever I talk about hyperbaric medicine, I'm, I'm always very careful to say uh, that it's a medical it's a medical procedure. It's a medical therapy. And so it's important that it's, it's, it's used in that capacity or at least thought about in that capacity. Yes. And, and that's where you hit the nail on the head again too, is, is you have a whole team of optimization. Like you have a team right. that's able to all work together and function as one. Like that's where you get in trouble with NBA teams or professional teams where they got one piece and one piece and one piece and everybody's right. doing their own individual things. It's like, okay, this is great. The analytics team is great or the sports performance team is great, but they don't work together in unison with anybody else. It's just, I mean, it's just not going to happen. And that's how most professional sports teams it, uh, are. And that's why I, yeah. I want to change the game and bring in a, just a whole optimization lab where everybody's working for the same purpose of serving the players and serving the coaches and just everybody's living with that joy. It's just infusing that within the culture and within the team and yeah. what i see too is really important about this is, is with coaches I'm, I'm good friends with a lot of nba coaches and i see a lot of stress that they have i mean there's a ton of stress there's a ton of pressure night in night out and they're just wearing their bodies down and some some professional coaches have had to, had to take steps away from it because they're just i mean they're just health right. is just rocked but if they can look at themselves as like, hey, I'm not just going to be a 1920s. I just got to grind it out, work, 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 stay in the office till 10 p.m. at night. But they can work smarter while also optimizing their body and their brain. They're just going to have so much joy in life, so much more longevity and so much more mental clarity and focus to be able to perform at their highest level, too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's all around. It's, it's yeah. something that can be, a, no doubt. Uh, again, we talked about it. It's, it's life optimization yep. here, but starting with the foundation. Um, and I think with the guys that you mentioned, Ronaldo, Tom Brady, and, and LeBron, these guys have whole teams around them. Yes. And there's a, a bunch of other uh, pretty well-known NFL players and others that I've seen over the years that have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on themselves to maintain their level of play for the, as many years as they did. And so um, but that's that's still not very common. I, it seems like it's happening more in some ways that more people are getting the idea that these guys have such longevity and how they're doing. I mean, Tom Brady, was he over 40 now and still playing? It's <laughs> crazy. And it's, it's, like, it's absolutely insane. The dude – anyway, so the people I mean, may give him a lot of uh, crap because of his diet and because of his lifestyle. But, I mean, that's because – we're always afraid of what we don't understand as far exactly. as I'm concerned. Yep. And, was, and the other thing is that, you know, there is, there is fear for people uh, for change. And, and I get it. Even it, um, we talk about, you know, your athletes and NBA players and coaches. I mean, everybody's just a person when it comes down to, right? We yep. still have to go to the bathroom every day and we have to, yep. we have relationships and we it just, there's all these different layers, of course, but when it comes down to it, we have the same cells, the same biology um, and we're all people and we all, um, we all can benefit from looking at it in that respect as well. So I think putting people on a pedestal, it also has its challenges. Um, yes. but, um, but I think fear is a big 
is a big component of this, a fear of change. And so it doesn't matter if you're on that pedestal, if you want to be or not, versus somebody you know that's not. Like We all have a fear of change. So I think that's another piece that's important to also realize when you see uh, media uh, giving sort of shock stories about Tom Brady or LeBron and how crazy they are. It's just because it sells papers and it, it instills or it, it relates to the fear that people have of change. So yeah. uh, just be cognizant of that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the hardest thing for people to ever do is go through change. And like LeBron's and the Tom Brady's, like this right here, this is how it's going to be the norm 10 years from now. But right now, anything that's different than the norm is always looked at as like, oh, this this can't be right. It's not the way it's done. But once it starts to catch on and it's going to start to catch on, like we're going to make that movement in the NBA and professional sports then everybody's going to be doing this 10 years from now and just it's going to just help so many lives and that's what i mean that's what i love about you man that's what i like you're in this you're on this mission for the reason to help people's lives it's not just about professional sports athletes at the highest level it's about everyone and just you just you hitting some of these points and like how much you care about each of your clients that come in and you can just you can personalize and like anytime i get something personalized to me like I just feel so much better. I feel so much cared for. Like somebody yeah, all, really wants yeah. to give and help me, and that's that's man, right. that's just so powerful. So it's it's yeah. hugely important that that's part of the conversation. If you go to somebody that says you just do this because everybody else does it, run. I know, yeah, because that's not the way it should be, man. So, yeah, uh, yeah. We live in it. We're all person. We we all have very similar biologies of course uh, uh, but at the same time we're all individuals we all have our different uh, different stories uh, that we've created or that been created for us and, and that's all part of who we are uh, but it's also important to have a beautiful relationship with ourself no and also understand that um, you know we are the people that we need to love the most so yes. that's a big part of it as well and I know that you work a lot on the mindset with people with with your clients and sort of reframing the conversation from being an external stimulus to an internal stimulus, like an internal uh, optimization versus an external uh, batting away reactive world that we all live in. And so once you start frame shifting, and then it becomes part of this, this conversation, which, uh, which becomes a lot more satisfying and fulfilling for everybody. And enjoying the process of, of being here on this planet becomes a lot more fun. Man, super well said. Enjoying the process, being on this planet becomes more fun. That's a great way to wrap it up, man. And and just wrapping this up all together is um, so how important this is to change people's lives from a cellular, change people's lives from a health, physical, and all mental combined. What are What are some things that people listen to this that maybe aren't professional athletes or are professional Mm -hmm. athletes or coaches can just take away and continue to learn on their own? Because this is going to keep coming and keep coming. And and anywhere I go and any team I work with, any player I work with, I'm bringing you with me, man. There's no doubt about (laughs) it. But let's say everybody doesn't have that luxury to do. What are some things? Because you hit on some, man, just some game-changing points that I'm just preaching to people. The importance of inflammation, how to increase mitochondria, what are some just some takeaways that they can just take and be like, okay, I'm juiced up about this in my own life? Oh man, I, I, that's a great question. Uh, I've been asked the question a couple different ways, and what I love is to kind of bring it back into a level that's very universal uh-huh. to start off with, and those are pretty easy. It's basically what what anybody can do, no matter what resources they have, no matter how much money they have to live a better life, live a more fulfilling life. Yep. And, uh, they're, and they're not all medical. The first one is just connection and is having a community of people around you that support you, uh, so that you good. support. And you know, isolation is the is worst thing that can happen to a human being. It makes you die. It makes you have a poor quality of life. And uh, phones and internet and virtual communication do not take the place of in-person communication and connection. Awesome. And I think that's really important. And so, I tell, I'll tell my clients all the time, I have to remind myself to take phone holidays, uh, schedule in time in your calendar when you're not actually using your phone and it's away uh, is really, really important and connecting uh, in, in, in any capacity, whatever your tribe, whoever your tribe may be. And also connecting with yourself as well is a big part of it, right? So it's not just connecting on the outside, but it's connecting to the inside of who you truly are and how you can really cultivate that truth 
on a daily basis in, in various practices, depending on what you believe or what, you're, what, you're, uh, what you can access or what you feel comfortable with. So connection is number one for me. Uh, the second is, uh, is moving. So most people, um, well, like, like we talked about, change is hard. Uh, walking around the block can be hard for some people. And so for me, movement leads to breath, leads to, leads to just a general feeling of well-being. So in general, I, I talk about just trying to move every day. You know, not, yep. We're not talking high-level athlete stuff here. We're just trying to get up and move. If you're an office worker, get out of your seat, take a phone call while you're walking around on the sidewalks outside, right? It doesn't yep. matter. Or even in the stairwells, for God's sakes. It doesn't matter. Yep. So um, take your calls and move. And I think movement leads to better breathing. And the combination of, of taking better breaths and getting more oxygen instead of hyperventilating all the time like we all do these days because of stress. <laughs> yeah. um, so when you're hyperventilating, by the way, David, you're not getting enough oxygen to your brain, and it's causing inflammation. So um, if you're not breathing well, you're not actually oxygenating your body well at all, and you're causing more inflammation. So this is one of the reasons how stress can truly affect us in so many different levels is because stress causes or inflammation and stress are so much, obviously. Um, so the third one that I often recommend, uh, it doesn't cost any money, and you're going to like this one, David, is, is, uh, is fasting. Not eating. Yeah, I'm into it, man. It's it's a game changer. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. So there's different types of fasting, and, and you may have already talked about this in some capacity here, but there's intermittent fasting yep. or just taking long spans of not eating uh, during the day or a couple days or, or like, or like 18 hour, 20 fasts. There's also uh, time compressed eating, so you don't eat for a window of the day and you eat during a different window. And what's funny is that athletes don't think that they can do this stuff, but they can actually sure. they can perform when they do it. If you are eating at 10 o'clock at night and going into bed at 10 30, I believe me, you're not going to perform at your best the next day. Oh I yeah. Just, yeah. It yeah. crushes your sleep that you have to digest while you're sleeping. It's yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. yeah. So that's the one that is a little bit pear shaped for people. When I say connect, they're like, okay, that's fine. Move, I can do that, but fast, no way. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Man, yeah, it is, it is <laughs> crazy too. I, like, like just just for myself, just jumping in there real quick. I've been intermittent fasting for seven years. Like in the morning times, right now I'm in the morning here in Japan talking to you. Like I am absolutely locked in. I haven't eaten anything since six o'clock the night before, and it's just. I mean, I get my best work done. I'm mentally traveling. focused. Yeah, and I'm tra Yeah, and I, I get my best workouts done fast. I have the most energy, and once. Once you start eating and then it just breaks your fast, it kind of slows your mind down, which obviously you're going to need food and, and, and fuel if you're a high level athlete, but we don't need it as we don't need it as what everybody says every three hours, eat six meals a day. Like that's not, I mean, that, how many times do we ever get to do that in our history? Never. Never, never. Um, again, we weren't performing in the some capacity as we are now. So sure. I think that you have to dial in modern cutting edge along with yep. uh, some of those ancestral ideas of what our physiology is, is primed to do. That's why you quantify, right? That's why you get your data and that's why you look at your sleep data like you were saying. Look at your heart rate variability data. Look at your, uh, your cellular data like we're talking about. And so um, the, the only other thing that I would add in to the things that I mentioned is that there's, I think that it's really important for uh, maybe your listeners to start looking at some of the new uh, the new research that's going on with gut health, with your, with yes. our microbiome, yep. and how significant our gut health reflects on the rest of our body. And it's a piece of what I do, uh, but the amount of data that's coming in there, we knew nothing about this 15 years ago when I was in medical school, zero. And so it's just amazing to, to see what's happening, the foods that we eat and the bacteria, how it interacts with the food and interacts with our colon and the, the cells in our lining and our immune systems and our brains and and predilections or preferences of potentially causing or having uh, causation or correlations to schizophrenia and depression and uh, and other uh, chronic fatigue issues. And it's, it's amazing to me what's happening. So I think if there's an area of re research that I'm really excited about, it would be there along with what I've mentioned. I'm with you, man. I've been studying on the microbiome and how important that is d directly correlated with your brain health. And it is... It's fascinating and it's cutting edge coming out. Have you got yourself a fecal transplant yet, Dan? <laughs> no, I haven't got there yet. I'm, I'm, I'm debating taking like coffee enemas and stuff. I'm st still haven't done that yet either. I haven't got there yet. But if you told me to do it, man, I probably would do it. 
Oh man, like the, uh, this is going to be a funny thing to finish off. But I just read an article on uh, they're called super poopers. You know, like you've yeah. heard of super troopers, right? Yeah. They're, I guess the super poopers are these individuals that have very good, we think, uh, bacterial microbiomes or the bacteria inside them are very good. And they're using these individuals as uh, donors uh, to help people with very bad gut problems. And so you you never know. You could be a super pooper, David. You have to get checked out. (laughs) Man, I've always taken pride in in those morning those morning dumps. <laughs> a little too much information there, but hey, I'll get checked out. I'll, I'll donate. Hey, everybody it. does it, David. Everybody poops. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I have a book I read my kids. Everybody poops. Oh yeah, I, mean, I, I my favorite my favorite book when I was a little kid was something about it. Might have been that same one. That's oh, funny. Oh, it's it's classic. I think it's I think it's like a, an Asian. It's either from Japan or China originally. I think actually. There you go. Uh, everything good comes from Japan. That uh, rests my case. Man. <laughs> Hey, I appreciate your time so much. Like you literally are absolutely changing lives. You and you're just on the cutting edge. And what's what's so cool about it is it's not just like you're not just saying, "Hey, you got to take, you got to do this, you got to do that." It's not ev- like for ev- everyone is personalized, is what I'm saying. And and it's from a more holistic approach, which is so refreshing. It's like the first thing you said was have community, have people around you, people you love, spend time doing things with people you love. Like it's not just. We're not robots, and we're trying to help athletes and people function at their highest level physically and mentally, but it's also all about enjoying the process, and you do a really, really good job of tying that all in and keeping that in absolute perspective, man. So I just appreciate the person you are, uh, appreciate your time, and you are going to be, as as long as you don't kick me out of your friend box, you're going to be a friend for life, man. Yeah. It's got to be fun, David, right? Otherwise, why do it? No doubt. Um, I mean, of course, having a long-term vision is important. But thank you for what you're doing and bringing some of this information out to your audience. I hope it's helpful. I mean, it's just really the tip of the iceberg. We didn't talk about you know, yeah. the, the details. But I, I hope it gives some of your listeners uh, an idea that there is another way to look at health, and that's just to focus on the health of you. And yeah. don't worry about the diseases and conditions so much right, aw- right away or all the time. Think about how you can focus on your health. And when you do that and that mindset changes, it's, it's beautiful and, so, and it's fun. Yeah, and let's start the NBA teams out and everybody with this one. And then once we get their taste buds going, we'll go super in-depth science on a bunch more details too. Whatever you like, I'm here. Awesome, man. Okay, it's early morning here in Japan, so you know what that means, what, what it's time for right now. These Japan toilets are heated seats too, so uh, yeah. Too much information, I've but I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, All right man. Dude. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate All it. Right. Big time thank you to Scott Shear, Dr. Scott Shear, for coming on the podcast and absolutely blowing our mind. As you can see, it's not about being whatever a men's health magazine says, whatever society says, whatever the food pyramid says. Yeah, turn that upside down on its head. It's about what works best for you. No individual is the same. Nobody's the same as you. You direct your goals, your needs directly to you. And now you have that blueprint and we can dive even more into that blueprint together and everything scott's doing check him out show notes will be in the podcast hyperbaric medical solutions.com game changer i'm going to be having him work with my nba players nba teams just optimizing their life to the max and when i get back from japan which is coming up really soon here He's going to throw me through the whole test and I'm going to do a podcast on how that helped me, like what exact things I do for my daily blueprint to make sure I stay the healthiest I can possibly be. I'm going to be doing a podcast solely on that alone. So how you can see my direct morning routine, you can see my direct everything that I do to make sure that I'm staying at a 6.2% body fat, having ultimate energy, never getting sick for seven years and just enjoying every single moment of life because game of lifers, life is a journey enjoy it. I'm not signing off yet. Before I do, check out the podcast app on your phone. If you have an iPhone, can you do this for me right now? If you're still listening to this, check your iPhone app, your podcast app. Just go to Game of Life, the Game of Life, which you're listening to this on right now, perhaps. Scroll down to the bottom. There'll be five stars. Pick one of those stars, whichever one you think is best. Five would be really appreciated. Or one, if that's what you think, click on it. Let's get some more ratings. Let's get some more reviews. Ask me any question you have. Anybody you want to see on this podcast you want to learn from, I got you. Just let me know. 
Game of Lifers, I appreciate you guys so much. Could not go through this journey without you. Let's just keep creating the one percenters that we are. Starting the movement, the one percenter movement. Have a great week. I'll be back to L.A. soon, back to the United States. And you know what? I'm here for you. Anything you need, Game of Lifers, reach out to me at any time. Because this life is awesome. It's a journey. Enjoy it. David Nurse, Game of Life, signing off.